So the Galaxy A32 was launched just a couple of days back and here are the prices, but is it worth that money of yours? Well, there are four really compelling reasons why you should get it, but then there are also a few things that may make you want to reconsider whether you should get the A32 or not. So stay till the very end and let's start with the first thing and that's design. And it's probably the most refreshing design I've seen in quite some time. I mean, it's so minimal and clean and just these camera cutouts with no housing. Look at the S21 Ultra camera housing right next to this one. I mean, it's definitely very powerful, but it's bulky and it makes the phone heavy as well. Now the back is surely plastic, but if you look at it, it does not look or feel cheap to hold. In fact, for a 5,000 milliampere hour battery phone, this is surprisingly super light. And the phone's height is perfect for easy single-handed use as well. I use the S21 as my daily driver and my only issue with that phone is it's super difficult to use with just one hand. The SIM card tray, it allows you to mount two SIM cards and one micro SD card, all three at the same time, so that's really great. And you get the 3.5mm headphone jack too. The second reason to get the phone has to be the display. It's Super AMOLED and it's 90Hz refresh rate. So Super AMOLED screens, as we all know, it's one of the best display technologies in the smartphone world. You know, the colors are real nice and punchy, very saturated, vivid, high brightness. And, uh, you know, even in the brightest of days outdoors, you would not have any issues with visibility. Now, the display size is 6.5 inches, which honestly, guys, I think is a really good size. It's not too small. It's not too big, manageable with single hand, and you still get a really good experience, whether you're watching videos, movies, TV shows, or even gaming. So... The size, I think, is really good. And now you get a 90 hertz refresh rate in a Samsung phone that costs just a little north of 20,000 rupees. Now, if you've never used a 90 hertz display, you're gonna love this experience. I mean, it's super smooth, you know, when you're scrolling the phone or just the touch experience with the phone is going to be elevated to a whole another level. Anyway, let's come to the third reason, which is battery. So you get a 5,000 milliampere hour battery, which is a lot. And Samsung, like in their M series phones, it does give you that battery capacity. In fact, there are phones that have 6,000 and 7,000 milliampere hour battery capacity. So if you're interested, I'll leave links in the description below. But hey, 5,000 milliampere hour battery is a lot. Even with heavy use, you will not run out of battery till the end of the day. With moderate use, you can easily go up until one and a half days. And if you move the refresh rate or lower it down to 60 Hertz in the settings, this will easily last you for two days. So that's a lot of battery life. Point being, if you have battery anxiety, <laughs> this is the phone to get. All right, reason number four. With the A32, you get One UI 3.1 Android 11 right out of the box. It's not One UI Core 3.1, which means you get features like Secure Folder, NFC, Dolby Atmos, and Alt-Z Life, and even Link to Windows. You also get the full version of Samsung Pay, so you can store your credit card information securely and make payments by just tapping your phone on, you know, the credit card machines. You do get some preloaded apps that you may or may not use, but hey, if you don't want them, you can just long press and uninstall and get rid of them anyway. And by the way, there's an inbuilt radio in the phone, so if you have headphones or earphones connected, you can tune into your local stations and enjoy live radio. But you don't get everything that you usually get with One UI 3.1 in the flagship level phones. For example, you don't get Bixby routines, you don't get Samsung DeX, you don't get built-in screen recorder. I understand Samsung DeX requires a certain level of hardware to enable it, but screen recorder and Bixby routines are sort of software oriented and could have been easily plugged into this phone at this price point. Something that I think Samsung should have included. But besides these few misses, if these four reasons are really important to you, the Galaxy A32 is a pretty good phone to consider. And personally speaking, I love the design. I'm blown away by it. It's plastic, but hey, you're going to put on a case. And honestly, the plastic just keeps the device lightweight, which I think is really good. Now let's quickly touch upon the camera. So you've got a quad camera set up at the back specs on the screen, and you get a 20 megapixel front facing camera. And here are some samples that I took using the primary lens, which is actually a 64 megapixel lens, but I shot all of these in the regular 16 megapixel mode. All of these images are available for you to download so you can evaluate the quality yourself. The only area that I think the phone did not perform as well is in terms of HDR. The images did look a little washed out and some pictures came out a little warmer, 
but other than that, pretty vibrant and extremely usable across all social media platforms of your choice. And here are some pictures that I took indoors. Now guys, a thing about the camera is that you can have the best of camera hardware, but if you don't know how to uh, frame your photos well, if you don't know how to play with lighting, it doesn't matter how good your camera is. So a lot of times it's just really about how well do you know to take pictures rather than just having really great camera hardware. Now here are some pictures that I took using the primary lens and then the ultra wide lens, which you can see on the right. The ultra wide lens definitely has slightly better dynamic range than the primary lens. And these are some indoor shots taken using both the phones, sorry, both the lenses. So again, download, evaluate, all up to you. And lastly, some samples from the depth sensor. And I think the edge detection worked really well. As you can see, the blurring of the background, uh, you know, the, the flower in the foreground, they're really well separated, very well detailed, really good. And just one quick selfie from the 20 megapixel front facing camera. I was quite happy with it. I mean, I used the portrait mode, so you know, the background could be blurred. The skin tones look pretty good. Overall, I'm happy. All in all, I think the camera is just about okay. It's decent for the price point. I wouldn't expect high color accuracy or brilliant post-processing capabilities, but it's not too bad either. Couple of more things to know. In terms of video, it can only shoot full HD at 30 FPS. No 60 FPS, no 4K recording. There's a scene optimizer built into the phone. You get the latest portrait mode. And in terms of other modes right in front of you, but you don't get uh, super slow-mo, no portrait video and no pro video. All right, so that's it about the camera. Do download the samples that I have posted in the link in the description below so you get a fair understanding of the quality yourself. All right, now in the beginning of the video, I said there may be a few reasons why you want to reconsider whether you should get the A32 or not. And one of them is performance. While the processor is capable of handling day-to-day -day tasks without much issues, it's not really the most powerful phone in this segment. At this price point, you can get higher performing phones for sure, especially if you're looking at gaming and multitasking at large. And the next thing would be price. So this is 22,000 rupees in India for six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, which I think is a bit much. And hey, if you are in India, you can use the HDFC bank offer to get 2000 rupee cash back. And that makes it 20,000 rupees. Now, if you're someone who was looking for a really good looking phone with Android 11 One UI 3.1, Super AMOLED display with 90 Hz refresh rate and a really good battery life or battery capacity, you can justify the 20,000 rupees. But hey, if, if you're someone who wants to be gaming on your phone or want to be doing multitasking at large, you may want to look at some alternatives in this price segment. And I think the Galaxy F62 in the online space is a pretty good alternative to look at. I've done a review, I'll leave the link top right corner. You can watch the review yourself, but yeah, uh, I would say look elsewhere if gaming and multitasking is important to you. All right, folks, that's pretty much it on the Galaxy A32. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.